there is a saying, when it rains, it pours. Brexit, North Korean nuclear uh, crisis, uh -huh. Trump, any advice to young people? Oh yeah, lots of advice. Learn languages as fast and as thoroughly as possible. The whole point of doing social anthropology here, and I, it's the core of anybody's thinking and progressing from now on in, is to be able to stand outside of your culture and look at it as a stranger. This is why I think it's very important to develop the marginal perspective. <laughs> is looking at it from the margins, not from the core. We're going to go under on the defense of the core, whether it's the cultural core here, the cultural core there, <laughs> or elsewhere, or the anthropogenic and anthropocentric core. If we think an ecosystem runs on the basis of human interests, <coughs> we're sadly misinformed. No known ecosystem has ever existed and cannot exist on the primary benefit to one of its constituent species. Can't happen won't happen. The best, fastest, and most effective thing you can do is to transcend your own anthropocentrism. That is, try to think the world as if humans were a passing phenomenon. Because we've got to scramble fast in order to figure out how to become a participant species in a complex ecosystem. Not a dominant species. There is no known human society that has ever persisted in dominating its own ecosystem. What's it done before? It's hived off to colonize others. <laughs> and we even have a physicist suggesting we should hive off to colonize somewhere in space. This is where Columbus, <clears throat> in a sense, introduced the biggest misplaced metaphor in history. He got to the New World, let's call it that, and Magellan, after him, shortly thereafter, him, went around the whole shoot and match, you know, and pretty much prove that it's round. But Columbus and everyone who came after him unleashed the biggest chapter in linear thinking in human history, the frontier. Endless frontiers, movement out into space in a linear inclined plane. This is progress. This is out there to conquer. Of course, we disregarded the populations that lived on the other side of the frontier. They, they didn't count. White settler frontierism is at the core of the colonial mistake. And unless we can transcend that form of linear thinking, and I don't think it's going to be easy. I mean, in the United States, even our greatest cultural heroes like John Kennedy elected his constituency to mobilize them on the basis of frontiers of space. Well, there's nothing more absurd than the idea of frontiers of a sphere, right? Uh, where you, how are you going to draw it? It's, it's a linear metaphor off of a sphere. Can't happen, won't happen. Fast, you've got to overcome this notion of continuous growth, got to overcome the notion of anthropocentricity, or the silly word for saying we're the cause and purpose of the universe. Not so. And you've got to start learning to take notes from the margins on cultures here, cultures there, and guess what? Species elsewhere. Just take the case of agriculture. Humans don't produce food. We can't produce food. The best you and I can do if we go out in the sunlight is get a suntan. And if we stay out there too long, we'll get sunstroke. But we don't photosynthesize. We depend on other organisms that do photosynthesize. Right? There's a ratio between the green leaf and the human population. As I say, anybody who thinks that humans can infinitely expand has no idea about how an ecosystem functions. In an ecosystem, all you can do, your best role as a human species, is to learn how to favor the environment for plants to grow. In other words, you can produce topsoil, topsoil produces food. And if you're lucky, you can get enough of that back to you to keep going. But if you're not producing topsoil, if in fact you're doing what every country, in every continent, in every culture is doing at this point, destroying topsoil, you're on the wrong side of the evolutionary trip here. <laughs> and your journey won't be long. So, advice. <clears throat> I had a plan a while back for PP&E at Oxford. They have a philosophy um, 
politics and economics degree here, which they're very proud of. It's absolutely misfocused. It should be physics, philosophy, and ecosystem science, PPE, but physics, philosophy, and ecosystem science. Why? To learn that we're not the center of a complex ecosystem and to learn how to use all the physics we can muster and all the philosophy we can manage to, to uh, absorb to realize that we, as a part of a functioning ecosystem, we've got to learn how to be a participant, not a dominant uh, species. So you got a, a new PPE degree, you invent it. Tell them they should give you a, <laughs> a diploma for it because they don't so far. In fact, they're giving out these PPE degrees for people who think they're in charge. The growth economics is the answer. It's the biggest mistake in human history. Good luck.